Planning projects is the fundamental work of the project manager. It's their time to shine. The planning stage is where the project manager creates the most value and demonstrates their expertise. They must plan all components of the project, that's the planning breadth, to a sufficient level of detail, which we call the planning depth. Generally speaking, we can say there are two main areas to address when doing this. Things the project manager knows and can control, and things the project manager doesn't know and cannot control. When planning the details they are knowledgeable of, the project manager creates to-do lists, orders the items in a way that is most efficient, and assigns the best people to the appropriate tasks. Then, there are the things the project manager doesn't know and can't control. Here, the project manager needs to think creatively. Risk assessment, estimations and forecasts are part of this process and the project manager is responsible for eliminating or decreasing bad influences on the project. How do they do that? Through diligent planning. Any risks that are unknown, say what the weather will be like next autumn, cannot be factored a year in advance, but the project manager will be prepared for any weather, among other things. As you can tell, good planning is a wondrous opportunity to optimise the work, ensure that everyone's expectations are the same and avoid costly errors. The future always contains uncertainties, so the more planning, the better, right? Right. The more things the project manager plans for, the higher their chances are to complete the project successfully, in that they meet the goal, the timelines, and the budget. And let's not forget to mention the people. People work so much better with direction, when they understand what to do and how and when to do it. I can't stress this enough. Planning is your strategy to succeed. The reason we are drilling this message so hard is that planning is often criminally underestimated. People think the sooner they move to execution, the better. But that's just not the case. In terms of project manager effort, it is often the other way around. Think of it as the 80-20 rule. If more effort is expended in the planning phase, less is needed during the execution. Less planning gaps means less replanning and reorganisation, which can lead to delays. The misconception is understandable, though. We as humans can be impatient. We get excited to reach the end goal and we feel like we need to be doing something in order to be productive. When really, in project management, planning is the most productive we can be, if done properly. So... Let's see in the next lesson how bad planning can affect a project. See you there. Okay, so we know what a project is. A temporary, complex, unique initiative. So with that, our initiation phase is complete. And the project manager is the one with the skills and experience to make the project happen. But hold on a minute, our Lamborari project hasn't got a PM. Who could take on such an important task? How about... you? Excellent. Welcome aboard. So, now, we're at the point where the board of directors has okayed the project, the PM has been hired along with the project team, the feasibility study and risk assessment have been carried out. We have a neat project charter and everything looks in order. So what next? Time to plan a project. So, take a pencil, grab the scrunched up napkin from the dinner table and spend the next five minutes drawing a mind map. <laughs> oh, if only it were that simple. Planning is a detailed procedure and is the key ingredient in the recipe for success. In this next section, we'll take a trip through the ins and outs of the planning process. Let's begin with the simplest of questions. What is planning? It is the process 
of analyzing, evaluating, deciding, and organizing activities in advance. We can summarize it in three fundamental steps. One, define the goal. Two, evaluate options. And three, choose and confirm the best option to achieve the goal. Complex human endeavors involve planning on two levels, strategic, should we do it, and tactical, how do we do it, when and what resources should we spend. But how important is planning in our work and in our spare time? That's an excellent question. So consider the following examples. Sports managers. They do not simply show up to the game and start yelling at the players. Before the game, they analyse multiple aspects. Create a game plan, decide how to attack the opponent's weak spots, how to defend their own, and they also have backup plans if the initial ones don't work. Take Hollywood actors. They have a strict diet and exercise plan in order to get buffed out enough to convincingly play your favourite superhero. These plans involve expensive physical trainers and dietitians who regiment their entire day-to-day -day lives. Or maybe something as simple as shopping. Before we go shopping, we look through our covers to see what we need, and we make a list, usually. When we don't, we come home having spent triple our usual amount, both of time and money, Nothing we bought can be combined to make a legitimate meal, so we end up ordering a pizza. Okay, this last one is failing to plan well on a small scale. But did you know the Sydney Opera House was initially planned to take six years to build for $7 million, while in reality it took 16 years to build and cost $106 million? Something must have been missed during the risk assessment or when evaluating the scope, right? Or how about the 2016 Oscar fiasco, where lack of proper controls ended up with the wrong best picture being announced? More than just money and time was lost there. With that said, what are the conclusions you can draw from these examples? Let me help spell it out for you. Planning is an enormous part of our personal and business lives, and failure to plan properly can have disastrous results. On the other hand, Excel at planning and you or your company will reap the rewards. Let's wrap it up here, everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next lesson. To really drum in the importance of planning, in case you haven't been listening, this lesson is going to look at the cost of change. Let's take this back to our project and jump into your project manager's shoes. Say you've planned for our showroom to be finished by the end of August, but when July comes around, Lamborari decide they want to add an additional floor. It's clear that construction won't be complete now until at least October, maybe longer due to bad autumn weather. The additional budget Time, resources and coordination efforts that are required to adjust for the change are the cost. Remember our trio of constraints? If one change occurs and affects one of our constraints, they will all be affected. And what's more, when the change is needed makes a great difference. If a change occurs later in the project, you can safely bet your holiday savings fund that the impact will be much worse than if it had happened at an earlier stage. If this decision had been made earlier, before construction had started and the weather was better, the cost would be much lower. Take a look at the following graph. As the time passes and the project progresses from initiation through planning and execution, the cost of change increases. Simple enough. But in case you're not much of a graph person, let's look at an example too. Imagine a project where a company aims to start making yo-yos that double as Bluetooth speakers. Then, at some point, top management decides that yo-yos aren't cool anymore and wants to make Diablos instead. 
If this decision is made early in the project, you can imagine the impact will not be too devastating. But think if this happened after all the yo-yo making machines had been bought. There's a good chance the project wouldn't even survive a change like that. You can imagine that expectations of stakeholders and scope are very important during the planning stage. And if the project manager doesn't cover everything in their plan, then things can go very wrong. That's why a project manager will need to plan their plan. Yes, that's right. See you next lesson where we'll show you how and why.